name, bro? I can't remember. Melvin. JJ. What you say your name was, bro? A. What's your name? Judge. I want y'all come up by the come by the sun, man, a little bit. Cause my brother right here said, he said you said you was a you said Judge. Sunshine. Sunshine. Okay. So my brother Abe said he's a member of the Black Panther Party. And my question to him was, why do you think that the government did so much to destroy the Black Panther Party? Huh? Too much together. What you say, Sunshine? Like, I mean, you think about the Black Panther Party, but then you got to think about people like Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, you had what? Who else? Um, Fred Hampton, Huey Newton, Marcus Garvey, uh, Kwame Turum, what is his name? Stokey Carmichael, you know what I'm saying? We had a lot of great leaders that they destroyed, but why destroy the black leaders? They are the enemy. Now give me Genesis 49. Because we go, what we're gonna talk about, like a lot of things that they did to our people back then, they doing the same thing today. You know what I'm saying? But what we doing, we're making it easy for them. Our job is not to make it easy for the white man to destroy us. Which is why we come out to the community because we need black men to stand up and take back over to the community. Because a lot of uh, the biggest reason why we have a lot of violence going on through the young kids is because they don't have role models to look up to. They don't have men to look up to. They don't have men in the community that's guiding and pointing them in the right direction. A lot of our children today are born in fatherless homes. They got their mother with them. But they ain't got their father. What's the importance of having a father in the household? Right, because a woman can't teach them how to be a man. What we, what, what do we as men bring to the table when it comes to a relationship? What you say, old school? Yes, what do men bring to the table in a relationship? Right, we got to bring money and food, but is, is, that all, is that all we bring to the table? Respect, leadership, mentality. Exactly. Keeping God in the midst, what you say? He is the head of the household. That's a hundred percent true. Right. But we but would you say men are the head of the household today? Why not? What are we missing? You said who? So are you blaming our our non uh godlike mentality on the women? All right, we can't blame them, it's on us, right? So read Genesis 49. Uh, First verse 9. Uh, about, uh, who shall rise in the book? All right. Uh, the book of, for, on the sunshine, don't go nowhere. We still got a lot to talk about, bro. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about the issues on how we going to fix our community. That's your wife? Why? Pull over, sis, because he, he we're going to teach him how to be a better husband for you. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So pull over and get this understanding. Read that. Yeah. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 1. Huh? Judah is a lion's wealth. So Judah. The African Americans today, majority of the African Americans today, we come from the tribe of Judah. Right. Now the Lord prophesied in, in during the time of Jacob. He told Jacob, he told him what, what their son was going to be in the last days. And this is how we prove who we are today. So he said, Judah is a lion's will. Read. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. You got to think, right? During the time when we came out of slavery, I think uh, slavery ended in what, 18, 18 something? 1865, right? When we came out of slavery during the 1900s, 1920s, we were still thriving as a community. Like we had Black Panthers, we had a lot of people that tried to ro rise up, right? But then what happened after slavery? What, what are some of the things that they gave us during that time that kind of dumbed us down? Integration was a big one. Cause they, they said, they wanted, why do you think they wanted us to come together? Why, why do you think integration was so bad? Because God is against integration. You know what I'm saying? God is for one race. God is a racist. God is a black man who only cares about his people. Jesus Christ is not coming back to save the whole world. But one thing integration has done, when you integrate with a race of people, and the, and the superior, the, the so-called superior race, they're able to control the narrative 
about what we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. Right. So that's what integration did to us. Integration destroyed us, right? right, right. But what are some other things that, that they, they put in our way to, to kind of take us off the path? You said integration. They did take the Bible out of schools. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what else they had? The welfare system. What are some of the conditions for the welfare system? The, can't have a man in the house. So men would be important, right? Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Judah is a lion whelp from the prey, my son, that are going up. Once we found out we had an enemy like a lion, once he stalked down his prey, he gonna go after his prey. So from the prey we rose up. When we understood God's commandments, we was dead on. Whoa. Read. He stooped down. He crouches as a lion. But then during the 60s, when they came with the with the civil rights movement, with the welfare system, with the politics, they say we stooped down. We crouched as a lion. We kind of gave up because we wanted to be integrated. We wanted to be accepted of them, right? So we kind of went up, went along with their politics. But their politics was never for us in the beginning. So we said we stooped down. We crouched as a lion. Read. And as a old lion, who shall rouse him up? Or when a lion get old, he can't move like he used to when he was young. And that's that's the state that our men are in today. So what our job as men is to, to restore our community. But what should we be restoring the community with? Because you will agree that we've tried politics. we tried the civil rights movement. we tried voting. We've tried all these different things. Why hasn't it worked thus far? Give me uh First Maccabees 3 and 4 to 8 about restoring. Why hasn't it worked thus far? So we tried all these things. What haven't we tried yet? We haven't tried the Lord and his commandments. His Bible has been here for generations. But we as men have not applied the Bible to our lives. And a big part of, one of, one of the big reasons why we haven't applied it to our lives is because when they brought us over here on them slave ships, they stripped us from our identity, our nationality. They didn't allow us to read. And when they didn't allow us to read, what did they give us? They gave us this right here. They gave us white Jesus. Can any of you see yourself in this? This has no value to us. This is not beneficial to us in no type of way. Looking at a, a man, a white man that's supposed to be the savior of the world, but he doesn't look like us. How is that going to benefit us? And that's the self-destructive mentality that the white man has created for us. So what do we got to do? Read. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. So what we got to do as men, we got to come together like the Black Panthers did. When they, when they seen the need for black men to rise up, they came together and said, you know what? We got to restore the decayed estate of our people. Right. If y'all don't understand that y'all are in control of this community and the, and the way that y'all move is going to set the tone for the world, then y'all will never rise up. But once we understand the God within us, because like I said, give me Psalm 82 and verse 6. We the gods of the earth. God chose us to rule this earth. And the only reason we at the bottom right now is because we broke his commandments. And, and when, like just like a father to a child, when, you, when your children don't listen to you, what do you do to them? You chastise them. What does chastise mean? Uh, you, there we go. <laughs> Pull the definition up for me. What does it mean? Why, why do we chat? What, what does chastisement mean? You got to get them back in line by chastisement. So that means that they kind of strayed off from the path. So I'm going to give you all this oppression, not to destroy you, but to bring you back. The Lord did not put us through this to destroy us. He put us through this to make us realize who we are. Because without this, we wouldn't know who we were. We know who we are because God pronounced these curses upon us and they came to pass. So we're going to read to you the definition of chastisement. Chastising to inflict suffering upon the purpose for moral improvement. So the suffering 
is inflicted upon us to improve us morally. Because right now we don't have no morals, no standards as black men. We stick our thing in any woman that walk by. We don't take care of our children. We smoke. We break God's laws all across the board. We don't have no value. But the Lord is telling us that we are his people. He told us above all people. But we got to see that within ourselves. And if we don't tell ourselves that and practice that, we will never get better. Right. Read what you got. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. Uh -huh. I have said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. And all of you children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men. The one thing the black people understood, they understood there was a God. Malcolm X understood that he was a God. But why, why do I say they understood that? Because they were doing something about it. If y'all understand, once y'all begin to understand that you're gods, then you'll be able to stand up as man and take your right for throne back. But we got to find out how to do that. Because we are here that a lot, but what are some things we need to be doing to profess that we believe that we're the gods? And that's what, go, now go back to First Maccabees. That's what we got to restore. That's the mentality that we got to restore back into ourselves, right? So, we the children of Israel, and the commandments is something that we got to keep. You are? All right, what you say your name was again? A. So let me ask you a question before you go, A. Why did we go into slavery as a nation of people? Yeah, why did the Lord punish us as a nation? Why did he put us through this? You never thought about that? All right, give me um, Exodus 1 and 13. Y'all familiar with Moses and the Israelites, right? What was Moses known for? Delivering the children out of what? Slavery, right? So the children of Israel, the people that you see on that sign, they were slaves in Egypt. Right. Moses freed them. When they got to the other side, you know, give me Deuteronomy 28. When they got to the other side of the, of the river, this is what Moses told them, all right? I want you to read with me. Look on your fly. Look on the front of your flyer right there on the front. You see Deuteronomy 28, 15? I want y'all to read along with me as we read it in the Bible. Right, you got a fly, big bro? Give my man a fly right here. Sunshine, you got a fly? Get you one too, man. I want you, I want you to read along with me as we read this right here. My man one. Y'all see Deuteronomy 28, 15? All right, we're going to read it along because this is what Moses told the children of Israel. Y'all follow? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Moses told the children of Israel if they didn't listen to God's commandments that curses was going to come upon them and overtake us. Right. One of the curses was that we was going to go into slavery. We was going to lose our identity. Today we call ourselves African American, black, negro. We don't call ourselves by the name that God called us, right? Deuteronomy 28, 48. One of the curse, another one of the curses that he put upon us. I want y'all to the, the second line. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, so therefore, because if you because he gave us two options. He said, if you keep my commandments, you live forever. But if you break my commandments, I'm gonna bring curses upon you. So one of the curses that he brought upon us for breaking the commandments is what we're about to read. And we're gonna read along. Read. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. So I got a question to my brothers right here. Who are our enemies today? Who would you say our enemies are today? Huh? You would say it's the white man, right? I agree. Not only the white man, but it's the Chinese man, it's the Arab man. All the nations that the Lord sent against us to put us in slavery are our enemies. But why did he send them enemies against us? Why? For disobedience. So I want y'all, don't forget that part because we're going to go over some things that we can do to show the Lord how we can be pleasing, how we can be accepted in his sight. But before we do that, we got to understand why we in the position that we in in the beginning. So the reason why we got to serve our enemies, like you said, for disobedience. Read. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. If God's supposed to be this all-loving God, because we was always taught, I was always taught, that the reason we went into slavery 
was because the white man was stronger than us. You see what I'm saying? Or oh, they, they had some type of special power. No, God, we broke God's commandments. And he said, by y'all breaking God's commandments, he allowed them to put us in slavery. Hey, check the fly out, hey. You say you're going to come see us. We're looking forward to it, all right? So the reason why he sent the nation against us is for disobedience. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So read it again. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So what y'all think about it? Everything that we want today. We got to go to another nation to get it. Whether it be our clothes, like the dress that you got on, my sister, where you got that dress from? You probably got it out of Walmart, one of these stores, right? But when you look on the back of it, it's made where? Made in China, made in Taiwan, made in America, you know what I'm saying? So the clothes that we got on our back, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, even the education that we have. A lot of our kids go to HBCU schools, right? But who owns those schools? Bring it out, bring it out. Our enemies own everything, and they're, they taught us what we know about ourselves, what we believe to be true about ourselves. We got it from them. Right. Our understanding about who God is. Where did we get that from? Who told us that Jesus Christ was a white man? Can we read this anywhere in the Bible that Jesus Christ was white? No, but who gave us this? But the Lord said that we was going to have to serve him for everything that we want. And the one of all things, when you die, you got to get a death certificate. Before they, before you even pronounce dead, the white man got to say he died at such time. Everything that we want in this life, we got to get it from the people that oppressed us, from our enemies is what God called them. But why? Read. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So when we specify who the enemy is, because some people may be confused. What nation of people put yokes of iron upon our neck? Who did that to us? My sister, who did it? Who put yokes of iron upon our necks? The white man put yokes of iron upon our neck. And he is our enemy, true enough. But the reason, the sole reason why this happened is not because the white man was stronger. It's because we disobeyed God's commandments. So if we go fix the situation, we got to find out how can we show the Lord that we love him? How can we show the Lord that we want that we are obedient to him? Because all y'all would say y'all love the Lord, right? But how, how do we show the Lord that we love him? What? By obeying us. You're on point, my brother. You're on point, right? Give me, uh, give me that in the first John 5. Because like you said, my brother said right here, if we want to show God that we love him, it's something that we have to do. We can't just say it. But in the church, they say, come as you are, you know what I'm saying? All you got to do is have faith and grace and you're going to be saved. That has deceived our people into not putting action behind saying that we love God. Read that. First John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. As the children of Israel, it's our responsibility and our duty to keep God's commandments. But what commandments should we be keeping? Give me some commandments that y'all know today. What about you, my sister? That's should not steal. That's should not kill. That's should not kill. Okay. That's should not lie. That's a big one because a lot of black people lie. And like they got they got these things called little white lies. But lying will stop you from obtaining the kingdom. What else? What'd you say? You got your commandments? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. I agree. Bear false with it. That's lying. Right? What'd you say, my brother, right here with the hat on? With the blue on, what you say? You know some of God's commandments? Okay. So the Ten Commandments, right? But my, my question is, are there more than Ten Commandments that we should be keeping? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with the second part, right? How would we love our neighbor as we love ourselves? Because with the 10 that you just gave, right? If you love your neighbor, would you steal from him? You want you would steal from him, right? So there are two great commandments that, that kind of that hang over all the commandments, but are there more than 10 commandments? Those are the ones you know, right? Okay, give me Leviticus, uh, what you got? 19. Okay, we'll read that. 19 uh Leviticus 11 and 7. The food, right? A lot of the way we eat today. Does God care about how we eat? I will say that. He cares about how we eat, right?
nation is men leading by example. 